Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Rockin' H Wood Shop. My name is Drew Short, where this channel's mission is to learn, teach, and inspire others to make things instead of buy them. If this is your first time here, I want to welcome you. Please consider subscribing to the channel as well as hit the notification bell. And if you want to help support the show, you can either check out my Amazon store or become a patron. So now, it's SketchUp time. All right, guys, welcome back to the tutorial. Let's see if I can get through this without screwing something up. <laughs> All right, so if you have made it this far through part one, you know that we are making a rail and style uh, panel door set up for like a cabinet door. And what we've done so far is made the style with the profile and the groove that will accept the panel um, that will be in the middle. So we need to go ahead and make the rail. And like I said before, this is the one that's going to be the most complicated because you're not only going to have the positive profile, but the negative profile that will be accepted uh, against its adjacent piece. So in order to save time, excuse me on that, in order to save time, what we're going to go ahead and do is duplicate this uh, style by highlighting it and then turning your move function on and hit the option key or control key if you're on Windows and duplicate it by tapping on it and hitting option and then rotate it. Now you just need to hover over the piece and you'll see these little plus signs that'll pop up all over the piece. Those will just simply rotate if you click on it and drag and you can look down in the bottom right hand corner and you see that the angles are uh, whenever you get to like 180 degrees or 90 degrees, zero, 90. So just put it where it needs to be and drop it. Now let's go ahead and move it up. And you can snap it to a corner just to kind of give you a reference point. I'm gonna move it away here for just a quick second because I want to uh, do something with this piece. I'm gonna hide the template behind. So just highlight it and hide it because I have my uh, width dimensions already with the styles in place. So now what I want to do is shorten this piece up. So I'm going to go into the component and oh, uh, if you uh, notice, once I've gone into this component, because it is a copy of this style, it is highlighting all three of these pieces. And if I make a change to this one, it's going to make a change to all of them. So I want to make this one unique because it's going to be a different piece altogether. So there's a couple ways you can do that. You can either uh, right click on the piece as it's highlighted and uh, make unique or you can explode it and rename it as a different component because if you uh, make it unique, it's still going to have a component name of style. And if you're making a cut list, that can be a little confusing. So if you're wanting to make a different piece altogether, just explode it and then click G again on your keyboard to rename it as a component or you can right click on the piece and say make component and we'll give it rail. And I've played with this already, so this whole replace business won't show up on yours because you haven't done it yet. Uh, so, but I'm going to go ahead and replace mine. <clears throat> so now, this piece is a piece all its own. And you notice now that these two pieces do not highlight whenever I go into the component. So I'm going to make this shorter, bring it in a little bit. And I did that with the push-pull function. You guys should know what that is. If you haven't uh, done so already, you can check out my prior tutorials to learn how to use a lot of these basic functions. Uh, so now what we're gonna do is move this piece back over in place. I'm gonna snap it with this corner right here to that corner of the style just by moving it over. And if you notice, it's uh, not quite in line with the groove, so I can, can drag it in a little bit further. So grab this corner right here with your move function turned on and pull it in a little further and snap it to that. Real quick guys, if there is any kind of tips that you guys can give me to make me a better SketchUp person as well, feel free to drop them down below in the comments and then I can share them later on in another video. All right, so now we have the piece in place and if you notice the outline of the style is giving us the outline of the negative for the rail so we're gonna go ahead and use those lines to lay out lines on our rail for the negative profile so I'm gonna turn my rectangle function on 
I'm going to go into the component first, actually, then turn my rectangle function on. Go to that corner, click, and go to this corner, totally opposite from it, and click. And then I'm going to use my line function. Start right here, draw that short little line right there, drop, escape, so I don't make another line funky. And I'm going to draw this line right here and drop. Now all I have left is the curve section. And you notice you can't do that with the line, so you're going to have to do it with the curve section like we did before. So it's up here in the top left-hand corner. Um, we're going to use the arc function. Now, in order to find the pivot point, sometimes you can hold your, like, hover over this little point right here and come down, and it will kind of snap to that uh, spot that's completely in line and 90 degrees to that point you were hovering over, and that can be your pivot point. But if that doesn't work for you, you can use your tape measure tool and just drag from any adjacent line or parallel line, I should say, and hover over that point and drop it. Now you have an intersecting point right here that you can use as your pivot point. So we'll go back to that arc function right there. Click and then come out here, click, and then you can make your arc and click. So now I will hide my style and you can see now that I have outlines that I can uh, drag out of the way. So we're going to go back into that component and just move them out. Turn my push-pull function on and you can see that they are separated. If they're not separated and you hover over this area with your push-pull function and everything highlights blue, there is not a co connecting line somewhere. There's maybe a small gap between like this line and that junction point. There's something that's not connected so you need to visualize that really close if you don't have uh, this right here. All right, so we're gonna drag this one out of the way and it can go all the way down because there's nothing that's permitting it from doing so. Now you'll notice here once I did that, um, there's a small little section, just a really thin piece that we just need to erase. So um, just getting out of your push-pull function by hitting escape, getting into the component, and then just uh, clicking on that face and hit delete or backspace or whatever's on your keyboard. And now get rid of those lines. You can uh, start from the bottom and just kind of drag up, making sure not to put your box in the area of the component, just the lines itself. And let go and delete. And that takes care of that uh, face that doesn't need to be there anymore. Now we're gonna go back up here and drag this down and one thing we're gonna run into is the positive face, and it won't let us go any further because there's, um, there's curved surfaces and not parallel and perpendicular surfaces that we're running into, and SketchUp will not let you go past that point on a standard push-pull. So we're just gonna drop it uh, a little bit before that spot right there. So now, to, in order to get past that point, because we have to be able to remove a lot of these faces uh, in order to create the negative profile and get this out of the way. So by having the, the push-pull function back on, click your option key, and your plus sign will come up right beside my push-pull. That will give us a positive push-pull instead of a negative, and it will give us some extra areas that we can delete. Now you can snap it to a corner just like that if you want to. You can bring it down a little bit further. It does not matter. Just make sure that it's past that point. I'm gonna just snap it to that point because it really doesn't matter. Just do not drop it right here. It's gonna be really difficult to do this if you do. Uh, so snap it right there. All right, now I'm gonna pan around here a little bit. Now you'll notice that it has created a slight uh, curvature this way and a slight curvature that way, but there's no line, no intersecting line, a black line that you can visibly see as I pan around. You can see this line and all the other lines around it, but you cannot see that one. And that's gonna be a problem because right now it's showing that this surface is connected to this surface and we want them separated. So in order to do that, you have to highlight the whole thing. 
I, I went into the component and I triple clicked, okay? So everything, every surface is blue. And I'm gonna right click on it. And we're going to do intersect faces with selection, because we've selected the entire surface area of that component. So hit with selection. Now, I'm going to zoom back in and you can see that I now have an intersecting black line. So no matter where I pan, I now have lines, which is good because that's gonna help us get rid of some of these unnecessary faces, okay? Now, don't worry about these little black lines. Uh, sometimes those do appear and that's fine. You can still get rid of them. But what we're gonna do now is make sure that we are in the component and instead of deleting lines, I've learned that if you delete the faces first, then the lines, you run into less of a problem because I've, I've gone through this and deleted lines before and it does not work the same way. So I'm gonna start just by deleting faces. Uh, you just highlight it with the arrow and then hit delete or backspace or whatever is on your computer. So just click on any face to start creating that negative profile as you go. And don't worry, if you delete something and you see turn, something turn blue, I'll show you how to fix that. It's okay. I got more faces here to delete. All right, so now I've got the negative profile made. I just need to make sure that everything is white and not half white and half blue. So I'm gonna get rid of some of these uh, extra lines now that I don't need by turning my eraser function on and just clicking and hovering over the lines that I don't want. They'll all highlight blue as I do this. There we go. Delete that one. Zoom in a little bit, delete this one. There we go. I'm gonna delete these funky little lines right here. Gotta get real close sometimes. There we go. Now, I got these two here. Okay, I'm gonna zoom around, make sure I didn't forget anything. I'll pan around. <laughs> okay, cool. Now, in order to get rid of this blue line, I found the easiest way is just to delete this line and it will combine this white and turn this one white. So let's give that a shot. Sometimes it's trial and error with me. Delete that line, and there we go. It turned white, delete this line, same way, and it turns white. All right, we now have the negative profile that will be accepted in that positive profile, and we still have the positive profile here, but we don't have it on this end, and we're gonna have to have it on that end in order to be accepted into this particular style as well. So instead of making life harder and doing all of that on this end, what we're gonna do is explode this component again. So just click on it, right click, explode. Now we're going to turn the move function on, and I want you to copy this component or this, uh, this exploded piece, do not, I repeat, do not drop it on this point because if you do, it will combine the two pieces and you'll never get them apart. So make sure you drop it in space without touching anything and drop. Now if it was touching this one, it's okay because this one is a separate component. So because we exploded this one, it has no ties to anything. So whatever you drop onto it, it's going to combine with it. So that's why I said do not drop it onto this piece. This one doesn't matter. So now that we have this one copied, what we're gonna do is flip it around to where this portion is on this end. So by right clicking on this exploded piece, go down to flip along, and this one is on the red line. As you can see down here, you can see a portion of my red line. That's the, the line that I want it to flip along, so hit red and now my piece is facing the correct way. I can go ahead and drag it into that component if I want to by using the move function and snapping it to the appropriate corner that I want it. I'm gonna unhide that other style by hitting U on my keyboard. And now I'm gonna rehide that template. There we go. 
Now I'm gonna drag by push pulling this face to this piece and make them one. So just snap it to that corner and drop. Now I'm gonna make all of that by clicking into it, make sure that it all highlights blue. I'm gonna remake this a component for rail one more time. It'll probably ask me to replace and that's fine. So now I have a completed rail, but I've got this unnecessary line that I don't want all the way around it because it was a joint. So just get rid of that line by going into the component, turning your eraser function on, and getting rid of those lines. I told you this was cool. It's a big time saver if you can do it this way. And this uh, works for just about any type of joinery that's gonna have a clone of itself on another end. You can use this method to um, to do that. Oh, one more line right there. Turn my eraser function back on. There we go. Okay, now I have a completed rail with a negative profile and a positive profile. And I did a lot of time saving techniques to make sure that it worked correctly. So now we're just going to copy that particular rail. Holding the option or control function if you're Windows dragging it down and then we're gonna flip it on the blue direction the blue lines going up and down and that's the way I want it to flip so right click on it flip along blue and now that profile is facing the appropriate direction drag there's a corner right there drag it down and snap it to that spot okay we now have a completed rail and style frame for a rail and style panel door. So be sure and join us next time when we create that raised panel that will go in the center to not only complete the project, but to make your presentation to your client that much more professional and you'll be able to close the deal. Not to mention your cut list will be easier to navigate. So be sure and subscribe to my channel right there, check out my prior video, and I'll see you on the next one. Boom!